Hey, what's up guys? Coach Bobby here with Ultimate Muscle Confusion. Welcome back to my video series. As always, here to bring you tips on fitness and health and nutrition. Here to motivate and inspire you and here to make your day a little bit better than it was yesterday. All right, so in today's video, I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about beast, about beast mode, about what it means to be a beast, about what it means to train like a beast and how I use that mentality to get in the best shape of my life. And so uh, many of you have heard the term beast. Many of you have seen it on social media, hashtag beast mode, hashtag beast training, hashtag be a beast, whatever it is. Uh, we have used that term to embody uh, next level training, right? Embody people who take their fitness journey, their fitness training to another level. And it's a compliment usually, right? It's meant to, to uh, give somebody credit for training hard uh, and being uh, in the gym fully, uh, fully involved, fully engaged in their workouts. And so recently I've been called, uh, recently a good friend of mine called me a beast. He saw a, a photo of mine on social media and, and said, you're a beast. And uh, I took it as a compliment. Uh, I've always uh, taking pride in in training uh, and the hunt and you have seen my video of me talking about what it means to be a beast and how how the real the real beast the real lions the real tigers uh, take pride in the hunt and the journey and how I have used that same mentality uh, to to come as far as I have in my fitness because I've always enjoyed the process and the hunt more than I enjoyed the reward or the kill. So, uh, like lions, like tigers, like all the beasts in the in the jungle, uh, in the, in in the world, I've embodied uh, the 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 difficulty of getting the prey, of getting to what I want, and and made that a a baseline, a foundation of my fitness, right? And so I've done that for years, whether it was training for football, whether it was just trying to be in better shape, and I've used that mentality not only only in the gym but in my life, but only recently. Recently, have I really thought about it and said, okay, what's changed? And so, you know, believe it or not, 15 years ago and 10 years ago when I was training, I was bulkier. I wasn't as lean. And, and I knew um, deep down um, that nutrition was a big part of being uh, aesthetically um, at your goal of looking how you want to look. And, and I knew that, but because I was younger and was hell bent on being big and strong, number one, I never focused on nutrition. And number two, uh, it wasn't really that important to me because I didn't really care uh, uh, about being super lean, about having a six pack. What was important to me was being big and strong and athletic. So once I moved away from that mentality and wanted to be leaner and wanted to be healthier, uh, I began to eat differently. And, and some might say eat more healthy, eat healthier, but it was more about being conscious of how I ate. And so this week I thought about it and I asked myself, what's the difference between how I was um, and how I am now? And the major difference is my mindset on how I look at how I eat. I still eat everything I've always eaten. I just know when to eat it, how much to eat it. But I think if I, if I would best sum it up, going back to my beast theme, I think what changed is that I began to look at my nutrition in the same light I looked at my training. And that was from the standpoint of being a beast. So we can also use the term uh, warrior. Uh, to describe some some uh, a way that people want to describe how they train. I'm a warrior. Um, you know, uh, I'm a beast. You know, those two uh, ideas uh, co-mingle, cross over, and have the same outcome in terms of it, it's a full-in attack on on your on the fitness on the training. But I would like to say and 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 give you food for thought in that. The real difference in, in me being as fit and as lean as I am now is the fact that I now not only train like a beast, but I eat like a beast. All right, so I'm gonna give you three ways that I want you to think about that I believe are the key difference for me in terms of, of, of changing how I eat to better reflect 
who I am as a human being, who I've, who we always have been as human beings, how we have evolved, uh, what we were meant to do from an, an, an anatomy standpoint and a, and a biology standpoint, and how we were meant to eat, and how that is not much different than the beast, beasts that we claim to be in the gym. So. I'm going to I'm going to state three things. I'm going to give you uh, a, a reason why that uh, is how it is in terms of why beasts eat like that. And then I'm going to bring it back to the real world and 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 show you what that means in terms of your own health uh, and your own nutrition and how you can how you can bring that down to a relatable area in your life. All right. So number one, beast. How do beasts eat? All right. Number one, they hunt their food before they eat. Right. And that might be the most fundamental of of the lessons. It's, it's number one for a reason. But that might be the most fundamental of rules that that I think we should all apply. So if you're a beast, if you're a warrior who has to get up and go hunt, they don't have food readily available so if you're a lion or you're a tiger or, or whatever you are in the jungle you have to first go hunt kill and drag back to your lair right the food you're going to eat right so it's very important to understand this because only we are the only species that does not have to do that unless you're a domesticated animal like a dog or a cat uh, you have to first hunt or gather your food before you eat it. What that means, bringing it back down to our relatable terms, is that they have to burn calories and expend energy in order to obtain fuel, right? So we, on the other hand, as human beings, have been, you know, through commercialization, through industrialization, through modern modernization, we are able to do nothing yet get fuel and food readily available, even brought to us. Right. So we have to expend zero energy to get the fuel we need to survive. Right. So if we're going to if we're going to act like a beast, what that means is that we have to forage, gather and hunt our fuel before we get it. So what does that mean? All right. So what that means is that on days we want to eat a lot, right? Eat more food, enjoy more of the things we want to enjoy and, and enjoy. We have to train on those days. So it's the equivalent of going out and hunting, all right? Going out and hunting a deer or an antelope if you're a lion or a tiger. We have to do the equivalent of that in the gym, on the track, or whatever it is. Do the equivalent of that before we are able to enjoy the fruits of our labor, so to speak. So very simple. When you're going to eat high caloric foods, make those be on the days you train. So hunt before you eat, right? So rule number one is hunt before you eat, right? Train before you eat. Train on the days that you want to have your high caloric days. That means, and we'll go over this in other videos, but that means on days you want high carbs, on days are the days you should be training. Right on days you don't train, limit your carb and, ha and and heavy caloric intake. All right. So that's rule number one: hunt before you eat. Rule number two is also pretty simple, but eat for a purpose and not for pleasure. And I say this all the time to my students and friends and family: we are the only animal species that has to enjoy everything we eat. I mean, do you think a a lion? Uh, has has a taste for a bunny or for a, a gazelle no they need fuel they eat for purpose they eat so that they're able to survive and so whatever is available to them to eat they will hunt it kill it and eat it without any thought to the taste without any thought to the texture or whatever right so they hunt and eat for purpose right so we have to have the same mentality Right. So I'm not saying you can't enjoy the food you like, you know, pasta or bread. What I am saying is that the more meals you eat out of pleasure and the less meals you eat for purpose, the worse you will look. Right. So it's a very simple continuum. Right. We all eat foods for one of two reasons, either for purpose or for pleasure. And the more food you eat for purpose, 
the better you will look, right? And the better you will feel. So eating proteins, eating healthy fats, eating limited carbs, slow digesting fibers, healthier carbs, those are things that we know are gonna give our body good fuel, and so those are for purpose. And so the more of those things you eat, right, and the less of the pleasure things you eat, things that give you instant gratification, that make you feel good, that make your brain reduce, I mean, uh, release the feel-good hormones, the less of those things you eat, the better you'll look. So again, back to thinking like a beast, when a beast goes out to hunt, right, it cares not what it gets and brings back to its family, right? It could be a rabbit, it could be a deer, it could be an antelope, it could be a bird. Whatever's gonna feed their family and feed themselves and give them energy and fuel is what they will kill and what they will eat. So the more you approach your nutrition with that same philosophy, the better off you will be, all right? So number one, right, hunt before you eat, right? Number two, right, eat for purpose more often than you eat for pleasure, all right? And then the third rule is eat for the desired outcome. Eat just enough to fuel your body for what you need to do, right? So imagine you're a beast. Imagine you're a beast and you have to go out. Imagine you're a lion or imagine you're a tiger and you're in the jungle and you have to go out and kill a deer or kill an antelope or whatever it is even though size wise strength wise and and viciousness you have the advantage over these animals there's still some risk for injury there's still some risk for expenditure of 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 much needed energy that that's going to be required to do other things so you're putting yourself at risk uh, to kill an animal to fuel yourself. So more often than not, you are not going to eat or kill more than you need for fuel or more often than you need. So you are going to put yourself at risk only and up to the level, right, of what you need to fuel yourself, right? So you're not going to risk it every single day. You're not going to risk killing, you know, two or three animals when they may do you harm uh, in the process. You are only going to kill and bring back to your family what's necessary, right, to avoid as much danger uh, and injury as possible. So what does that mean in terms of, of how we eat? We often and more, you know, more often than not eat much more than is required for our fuel requirements. Right, so we will we'll eat enough. You know, using a car vehicle, car analogy. Sorry, we'll 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 put more fuel in our car than is necessary for the trip. Right, we'll fill our car up when we're going down the block. Right, we'll put fuel in our body enough to run a marathon, but we'll sit on the couch and watch a marathon. So beasts don't do that. Beasts go out and kill what is necessary for their energy requirements only. So when they're hungry, they go out and hunt, right? And they kill what's necessary for them to survive. Not a bit more. Not only, can, not only does it risk injury, but they also can't store it in a refrigerator like we do. So it's very important to understand that we don't have to eat beyond um, satiety, beyond feeling you know, full. Not even to that point in most, in, in most situations, uh, but we too often do. We eat beyond that. We eat because it tastes good and it feels good and our brain releases all these feel-good hormones. So we eat much more than we need more often than we should. All right. So those are the three rules that I believe if you adhere to those, if you embody those rules of being a beast and you take this beast mentality, not just from the from the weight room uh, and the fitness arena, but take that same beast mentality to your eating habits and your nutrition, you will see quicker gains than you've ever seen. And so once again, the three, the three rules of thumb on how to be a beast outside of the weight room and, and in the kitchen and at the table, number one, hunt before we eat, right? Work out on days you're gonna eat high calorie meals, right? Work out before you eat, right? Number two, eat for purpose, not pleasure, 
right? So spend more of your time understanding what the food is going to do to your body and eat those things that are going to give you the fuel you need to, to be successful, to have energy, um, and to do the things to your body that you know are going to coincide with, with what you're doing to it in the weight room. And then lastly, eat just enough to fuel your body's energy requirements and not more than that. All right. So I hope this has been helpful to you guys. I hope you continue this journey toward self-betterment, toward getting better uh, every day that you can, uh, toward not looking too far in the future and not dwelling on the past. All right, guys. So until next time, I wish you guys the best of days, the best of weeks. And until next time, I want you guys to, to remember the philosophy we have at UMC. And that's every day we get better or we get worse. We never stay the same. And our goal is to be better than yesterday. Until next time, guys, hashtag BTY, better than yesterday. Uh, take care, you guys. Coach Bobby signing off. Take care. Bye-bye.